In 1987, a revelation shook the world. It was a scandal about perhaps one of the greatest thinkers of the modern world. It was found that the Belgian-born literary critic and professor in several U.S. universities had done a lot of pro-Nazi literary work and journalism back in those times of Hitler. This was a man known as Paul D. Mann. He had then migrated to the U.S., completely hiding this dubious past. The world was in shock. D. Mann was the least affected by such of revelations because he was dead by then. This happened three and a half years after his death. I always wonder what we should do when great talents are revealed to have moral flaws. Are we monsters when we enjoy their work? Can we keep our eyes closed and ears shut to the undeniable talent of such deeply flawed individuals? Can we truly appreciate demand or are we merely doing delip service? When debuck speaks, can we judge? Let us, for the time being, willfully suspend our moral compasses in disbelief and try and learn a thing or two about what made Paul de Man the man in academic circles. He is most commonly associated with the so-called Yale School of Criticism. It included the giants like J. Hillis Miller, Jeffrey Hartman, Harold Bloom and Jacques Derrida. During his life, de Man published two Groundbreaking books, Blindness and Insight, Essays in the Rhetoric of Contemporary Criticism, and Allegories of Reading, Figural Language in Rousseau, Nietzsche, Rilke, and Proust. The collaboration and friendship of the Yale School is captured in the co-edited collection, Deconstruction and Criticism. Other volumes of Demand's essays were published after his untimely death from cancer in 1980. Three, blindness and insight pioneered an approach to reading the language used in critical writing itself, suggesting that critical texts are paradoxically most blind concerning the topics about which they aim to be most insightful. Critical text, we have to literary text, we have to analyze the theory, we have to do this critical text. എന്നിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞു ഇവർ പറയുന്ന പല കാര്യങ്ങളും ഇവർ അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്യുന്ന പല തിയറികളും ഇവർ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുന്നു എന്നുള്ളത് ഇവരുടെ ഇവർ ഇവർ ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള ഭാഷയിൽ തന്നെ ഇതൊരു സെൽഫ് ഗോൾ ആയിട്ട് മാറുന്നുണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇതിൽ ഡിമാൻഡ് പ്രൂവ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് ഇവർക്ക് ഇൻസൈറ്റുകൾ ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷെ ഇവർ ബ്ലൈൻഡും ആവുന്നുണ്ട് എന്താണ് ഇവർ പറയുന്ന ആശയങ്ങൾ പലതും ഇവരുടെ ടെക്സിൽ തന്നെ എങ്ങനെ അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അത് തിരിഞ്ഞു പോകുന്നുണ്ട് എന്നുള്ള കാര്യം ഇതെല്ലാം ഭാഷയുടെ പ്രയോഗങ്ങളാണ് The deconstructionists all play with language. So he plays with the language used in critical texts. Demand developed this approach in allegories of reading into a wider understanding of how language works in general and how texts continually create and undo the meanings they posit. Paul Demand views language as inherently metaphorical or rhetorical, similar to what Verida believed. He conveys Derrida's notion of difference using his concept of the rhetorical nature of language. Derrida ki Derrida Derrida had a style strategy and there was a style and there was Paul the man so the mind is a style and there was now semiology and rhetoric. This is a seminal essay of Paul the man. The word seminal has origins in the Latin word seminalis and means semen or seed. with the, we use the word seminal to refer to those articles or essays which can be called pivotal or landmark in the establishment of a chain of thought a seminal work influences later developments or sums up the most important concepts in the oeuvre of an author well, what is the relevance of this work semiology and rhetoric and then let us look at the title you understand the title you understand the concept better Semiology is the study of science we see around us. Semiologists study how the words 
create meaning. Rhetoric is the art of persuasion. It refers to the manner in which language is used to communicate concepts. Demand reminds us that the arbitrary use of sign or signifiers frees the critic and the reader of the responsibility of reinforcing an author's interpretation. Paul Demand talks about the tension between grammar and rhetoric. When we use language, we can understand it literally or grammatically using the word order or what we call, what we call syntax. We understand this as the denotative meaning. We can also understand its figurative or connotative meaning. He needs to illustrate this tension. Grammar, rhetoric in the middle of tension and bhashil in the middle of Paul Demand. Let me give you an example. How many examples are you? So he takes an example of language where this contradiction, this tension is easily seen. Demand asks a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is a question asked in order to create a dramatic effect or to make a point rather than to get an answer. Uttarang time when you talk about I'll give you some famous examples. Just imagine giving a reply to any of these. Teacher comes to class and asks, Idanda, or chandayano? Yes. We don't say that, right? Is it the fish market? No. Be quiet. Do I look like a fool? Yes. <laughs> we don't say that. Who do you think you are? What do you think of yourself? These are all rhetorical questions. I hope you get the point. In the essay, Paul Demand gives an example of when a person's uh, wife asks her husband uh, of uh, how about how he wants his Shoe lace. Okay. So she asks her husband how he wants his shoe laced and before uh, before he goes for a bowling game. Nine pin bowling. She, she suggests two ways of doing it, to which he replies with a rhetorical question. What's the difference? What's the difference? She's a bit naive, maybe. So she does, she does not understand that it's a rhetorical question. Because you can interpret it in any way. She goes on to explain the difference and the benefits of the two methods. What's the difference? She says The husband was wondering what the, what, the, what difference it would make to the manner in which the lace was tied or to, to and how it would affect the game. There's no difference. Demand goes on to explain that the grammatical model of the question becomes Rhetorical, not because we have a literal meaning and a figurative meaning. Literal meaning and a figurative meaning. This sentence gains a rhetorical sense when it is impossible to decide by grammatical or other linguistic devices which of the two meanings dominates the other. We really cannot decide which meaning prevails. That is literal meaning and figurative meaning. That is why we are not able to do this. But this is the same thing. This is the same thing. That 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 is the same thing. What is the difference? That is the same thing. 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 That is if we do not see the expression of the husband 
or the wife, we can interpret the rhetorical question. What's the difference? Any way we want. Namaka husband in a Mogavo, Lingle Pari, a Mogavo card, and the Kana Betanilla. Upon the literal meaning, I the figurative meaning, I the Manslak and Varu Margo Illa, Hashan Oki to number Padigan. Upon Avadana rhetoric work key than another. For demand a case, demand parana and dana, Bhasha, rhetorical anana and the Ladana, Adena, EU suspension under Adena grammatical sensum, Adena figurative sensum, random Uruvola function in the under. Unine material in the Marty can Patilla in the Ladu Yadhartimana demand parana. He also quotes uh, W.B. Yeats's line from Among School Children. Very popular line uh, in the net exam. Uh, oh, chestnut tree, great rooted blossomer. Are you the leaf, the blossom, or the bowl? Oh, body swayed to music. Oh, brightening glance. How can we know the dancer from the dance? The final line. How can we know the dancer from the dance? This sums up dem demands argument. It could mean that the creative acts like dancing or some or, 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 or painting. Creative acts are so intimately connected with the artist who created them. And separating the two, it's almost impossible. This is a rhetorical question. Can we take it grammatically and say, and then grammatically, question Hey, that person who 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 is dancing is the dancer. The hand movements and the body shaking that he is doing is the dance. End of story. Go. We can also dwell on the question. Can we truly differentiate between the two? Can we define the act of dancing without a dancer? There must be someone or something which performs the acts we all call as dancing. Can we call any person a dancer? No. A dancer is someone who moves according to some rhythm. And we have called, we have given it the name as dancing. The identity of the dancer is inextricably. The identity of the dancer is inextricably bound with the act of dancing. Demand uses it to explain how text function and how form and content, what is inside the text and what is outside the text are inextricably connected with each other. Language is inherently rhetorical and knowing whether grammatical or the denotative meaning or the connotative meaning prevails is just like differentiating the dancer from the dancing. It is impossible. Demand is part of the Yale school of deconstruction but uses a different strategy and terminology to deconstruct language. He uses the inherent rhetorical quality of language to refer to the impossibility of reaching a stable reference point. Grammatical mati, uh, figurative mati, angane meaning like ethan bettu on yachal patil la enala dana ee critic parayana rhetoric radically suspends logic and opens up vertiginous possibilities of referential irregularities pala pala sadhyagal thornu virana enala dana rhetoric lode endana pala meanings um possible aanu adana onnu uddeshikkunnathu literal meaning mathramalla figurative undu na figurative mathram aanu yachal adu alla literal meaning um possible aanu he says our language is full of such rhetorical possibilities which are inherent in it. Grammar rules regulate the words and logic regulates our thoughts. Demand says language is inherently rhetorical and this denies any reliance on the stability of grammar and logic. Grammar is not the logic is not the logic. And then meaning the stability is the in the ana in the parana or pick and patum in the lo vishwasundalo. Tetana in the ladana demand parana. He says, even when we engage in ordinary conversation, the language at work has this potential to present this ocean of meaning. Does it mean we cannot say anything meaningful? No. The main argument of demand's seminal essay can be stated as follows. The grounds of literal meaning and by extension all meaning must be located in rhetoric 
rather than in any of the other possible dimensions. Formula la, content la, la reference la, grammar la, la logic la, la Pakshan dana, meaning every day, I bhashada, ah, uyavatilana, ah, rhetoric lana. But the grammar under figurative meaning would random within under. Avadiana, bhashada meaning at a can another. Pakshan da, stable right level in Pombito, Patinilla. A rhetoric in the number rigorous idler or strategy lude. Ella aspects of consider the number meaning like a tan shamikan the ladana. Rhetorical reading cannot guarantee authority over interpretations. Therefore, there is no authority that can guarantee a reading. Hence, the man says each act of reading is a misreading. This doesn't license us to read a text. Just any way we want to. The man differentiates between a correct misreading and an incorrect misreading. Paul D. Manum, Harold Bloomum, he misreading the Lavaklo Vakan For D. Man Parnandana, or correct misreading him, or incorrect misreading him, possible Anandalana, and the Anubdeshina. An incorrect misreading tries to dominate certain meanings and suppress others as if they do not exist. That's why incorrect misreading. misreading. reading. 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 Demand for another Ella misreading on Namaka, the correct title of interpretation chat Patilla and the Totakan the Ne Perchenu. Padundana, we walk misreading the wake another. About correct misreading the wake camp, incorrect misreading the wake camp. But incorrect misreading in the Matis Adela like a Ila Hikundala, Uruvaina. But correct misreading in the Anna, a correct misreading is the one in which or the one which takes into account all the possible ways of reading. Paramavadi Adana Oro Kairingla Manslak Kainala Ella aspectsum Elam consider stay the Gundala Vaina. It is aware of the self deconstructing nature of the text. Bhasha Epurana Parna Kairingla than a Tirichavarana chance in the Aru Tiricha Viludiana Evaina Narakamada. The Bhasha language in a ru self deconstruct Chianella ru. Nature under the teacher would be like in the correct misreading is aware of the self deconstructing nature of the text. It is aware that the text simultaneously asserts and denies the authority of its rhetorical mode. Such readings take full account of the possibilities and limits of reading and writing generally. One name for these possibilities and limits might be. Deconstruction and demand for another.